what do you get in your new S-Man 480V? So we're gonna talk, we're gonna set this up from brand new. I'll discuss a few of the items that you get in this video. We don't need that anymore. You get a cover for those uh, who use covers. I, uh, I don't use covers myself. I actually am pretty brutal on my equipment. I have no time for taking them in and out of covers. And, uh, one of the things that uh, in the beginning, to. I really should have taken this out of here prior to doing this. Set up. Come on. As you can see, their protection is quite good when they send it. Definitely don't have to worry about it in shipping. They do an excellent job of covering everything up, making sure nothing's going to get scratched or damaged. That, get rid of that. These are your clamp on type. Bluetooth is an option. You could have Bluetooth clamp on sensors. This is your ambient probe. So, this probe here at the very end of it right down there that little tiny bb you see that little end piece that's your thermistor that's what picks up your temperature that gets connected your exterior temperature and that gets connected right there and as you can see there is a plus and there's a minus and you can see that the little the picture of the tabs one is smaller one is bigger don't try to force it in the other way people have done that and if you come and you look on the tab, you will see I can open it. on the tab itself, one is bigger and one is smaller. So don't make that mistake. So here's a mistake. You would not want to force it in like this. You would want to put it in the correct way like this. Now, if you also look, you see how that it doesn't quite fit because this is a friction fit they made these little pieces of rubber right here so it will go in really difficultly but it will hold it and it'll friction fit it'll squeeze in so watch this and if we make sure it's in there the tabs go right there there they go first you look there then you can push and it is now pushed in really tight and these little pieces of rubber on the side are squeezing in really tight on this so this doesn't fall out easily the same goes with these ends here now you're going to want to go through the calibration procedures when you hook up these new gauges you have to calibrate them if you want it to be perfect and you have to read you guys know what reading is you have to read about cal it's really simple and they have good videos online about using ice water to put your gauges in right here these little thermistors put them in ice water and you can set the calibration on the unit with the pots to get them exactly uh, set in ice water at 32 degrees so that'll be uh, another video maybe I'll make a video on that but I don't need to because field piece has done that video before so why do i need to remake a video that a really good company has already put out and produced to show you the correct way to calibrate your thermistors people just think oh you just put them together throw them on and it just works well no you want to calibrate stuff sorry guys so the same thing goes with this you want to get the right size for the right one see we're wrong let's turn it over now we match the picture if somebody can't match the picture and they can't if they can't read they can match pictures if they can't match pictures I don't know what to say and so we're gonna look inside there and we're gonna make sure we're in the grooves first there we go we're lined up now we're ready to push and we push there we go we got that one in 
don't have to show you another one. I'll leave that off because we don't have to go that far. So let's get some batteries. Now I'm not into using, these are good for my toys. And uh, I like higher quality. I mean, these are not bad, but I like batteries that I know that last longer and are not going to leak. So I have the Panasonics here. And I date my pan all my my rechargeable and reusable batteries. It'd be nice if they would come out. So these are Panasonics. N loop is what they call them. These uh, they make the white batteries and the black ones. Now here's the thing: the black ones have are great for higher output, more amperage in a short duration of time. These don't really need that. The white ones have more capacity. Uh, and last longer life. They have a longer cycle life. These have like a 500 cycle life, being able to be charged up 500 times. The white ones, I think, are 1,000 or 2,000 times, something like that. And the white ones have more capacity than the black ones. But I just have, I have all my white ones are used up. And uh, so we're gonna put these in here. So let's get out a few of these. Take six batteries. These cases are kind of nice, and you can hold a lot of little double A's. You can see all my double A's are used up in all my sensors. Nine volt rechargeables. I have not had luck of finding good uh, nine volt rechargeables. So let's throw in the batteries. Now, these don't fall out like one of the other competitors. So there's somebody who's a big name and uh, they like, they say, oh, our batteries, they're bragging about how easy their case is to take off to change their batteries. Well, guess what? Uh, the other competitor who brags about how easy it is to take their case off, it's also easy when it's laying around in the back of your vehicle or you drop it or you have it hanging up, that little clip they have in the competitor, uh, the competitor who has the colors of the San Francisco Giants, I won't say their name, it gets hit and the case fa falls off inside your vehicles and the batteries go flying out all over the place. And it's not water resistant. That's the other problem with the competitor who has a nice, nice looking gauge, I will say that. And they are they were known for very good quality tools at one time and um, they're kind of still living off that name of when they used to be good and uh, I am not gonna say their name but yeah watching one of their videos and them bragging about how great of advantage it is to be able to change batteries easily and this is another thing do not buy cheap batteries that you know leak and put them inside a expensive electronic device. Things one day will not go well for you when you find a battery asset has leaked out and gotten onto the very fragile circuit board inside and your gauge is not working anymore because you destroyed it by putting in cheap batteries. So we'll put in our batteries. We've all done this before. And um, the date code that I have on here, there's a reason I have a date code. So when batteries are all brand new and they came from the same batch were manufactured, these are rechargeables. You never wanna mix batteries from different makes and manufacturers or one that is partially used at six months old and then put five brand new ones because they discharge into the one with the lower wattage and they cause it to overheat inside and that's how you get the leaking of the acid and it'll go down inside the holes and get on the circuit board and damage your equipment same goes with rechargeable batteries if you buy rechargeable batteries and you put a date code on them and you use them all together all the time and charge them all at the same time they will relatively age similarly not exactly but similarly so they don't discharge each other but if I bought some of these from two years ago and I've already cycled them two or three hundred times, they will not have the same capacities as brand new ones that I buy out of 
a brand new package and I charge them up 100% and I put one of the old ones with five of the new ones, I will now have one battery that acts like it has a different resistance and from a different manufacturer. So the batteries won't know that it's the same manufacturer. All they will know is that the resistance level of the old used battery is different than the new batteries. And that's how you get short life batteries or leaking batteries. So don't do that. And uh, if you get into uh, rechargeable batteries, date them, stick to the same manufacturer, don't mix them. Okay. Now, if there's another thing you'll see right here, you see this little black line right there? That's an O-ring seal. That is actually a sealing surface to make this water resistant. Not waterproof. You can't submerge it underneath in a swimming pool. That's not going to go over very well. But if you look really the, look right there, if you look at the ridge of this, it's very square cut and very even and level. And they have little pads here to hold your batteries down so they don't flop around. And that goes back and that ridge around there seals. If you look real carefully, let's see if we can get in there. You can see there's a very deep groove that falls off the back in here. And that whole entire area literally sinks deep down into that and seals very well to make this water resistant. Uh, if you've seen my videos, I have used these out in the rain and I have left them out in the rain. And for you guys in the snow, you probably use them in the snow when you are forced to because you have a job that has to get up and running. And uh, that's it for now. We will leave this, I think, off to another video. And I'll uh, finish this up because it's monotonous watching somebody just put batteries in and tightening them up. You know, have our first fire up, unless I put the batteries in wrong. And yes, here I am paying attention to the video. And I did not, did I? Hey. <laughs> okay. I'll see you on the next video. The idiot behind the screen taking the camera put the batteries in backwards. Or he put in dead ones. I, I'm sure I've charged those up. All right.